The fall armyworm has been and still is an insect pest that extensively destroys the maize crop. And on today's Farm Trends, we begin a two-part series here at Plant Village in Busia. And this is an ag tech innovation organization that is closely working with smallholders farmers uh, through innovations to help them avert the challenges that have been caused by the fall armyworm. And on the show today, we have Masi Kemboi, who is one of their scientists that will be taking us through the entire processes that are happening here in this lab. Keep it right here. My name is Masi Kemboi. I am a scientist here at the Parasitoid Rearing Facility in Busia by Plant Village Dream Team Kenya. Fall armyworm is an insect pest. It affects mostly maize. It eats the heart of the crop so that um, the yield is reduced tremendously. The fall armyworm attacks the heart of the crop over maize. And fall armyworms don't just affect maize. They can also affect millet, sorghum, amaranthas, beans. But if your farm has maize, then that is the first thing that the worm will be attracted to. And then fall armyworms, um, when they are at the young stage, when they are neonates, they have uh, webs that help them move from crop to crop and the moths can fly for as far as 500 kilometers. So you can have one moth here that can fly all the way to Malaba and that is why it is easy for it to uh, be transmitted from farm to farm, from plant to plant. If your farm has been really affected by the fall armyworms, you can get zero yield. You can even get 20% of what you're expecting, 15%. Yes, I mean, worst comes to us, zero. The solution that we are providing is organic. We, don't, we do not advocate for chemicals because that affects the health of the farmer and the environment, and we are trying to curb climate change. Um, and the solution that we also offer, that we offer is also pocket friendly to the farmer. Yes, so what we do is that we take parasitoids to the farm when, the, when their maize is two weeks old. So because this is a parasitoid rearing facility, we're going to show you both the hosts that we rear and the parasitoids that we rear as well um, on a day-to-day -day basis as we aim to help farmers. And then on the second part of the series, we're going to take you to a farmer who has already benefited from the program and we will show you how we release the parasitoids to farms and how that works out. So I am going to show you the host, the fall armyworm, which is one of our hosts in the lab, and how we get the eggs from the host. We usually use a pair of scissors to harvest it. As you can see, they have laid on the substrate papers on the cages. So inside this cage, we have three stages of the growth process. So we have the pupae, and from the pupae, what will emerge from the pupae around seven to nine days, around seven to nine days is the moths. The moths are over here. The moths like darkness, so that's why they hide, they hide during the day. They don't like the light, so they are nocturnal. And then once the moths have been hatched from the pupae, they will mate. They will mate inside the cage and then they will lay eggs. And the same process takes place here. So these are just the same stages, the same neonates but different stages. So this is our second lab where we have our alternative host. These are rice moths or they're storage pests but we use them to produce eggs. This is where they lay their eggs. These are our oviposition buckets. This is where they lay their eggs. And once they have laid their eggs, we use them to produce parasitoids. Because the way parasitoids work, like I said, is that we need a host and then we need a parasitoid. It is a parasitism relationship. Now that we have harvested the eggs, we're going to take you to the parasitization room where we will see what parasitoids do to the eggs. This 
is lab free. Here we do mass production of fallen wool using artificial diet. This is an artificial diet. We prepare it in the lab and the purpose of this is so that we get more fallen worms. If we have more fallen worms, it means that we have more eggs. If we have more eggs, it means that we have more parasitoids. If we have more parasitoids, it means that many farmers are being assisted by our technology. This is the last stage of our production process. This is where the parasitoids are reared. And um, once we have gotten the eggs from the other hosts, from the Folamium host and the rice moth host, we bring them here. Um, inside this tin, as we can see, there are parasitoids here. They are tiny red insects. These ones have recently emerged from the cans. And once we get fresh eggs, what we will do is bring them in here. This is a kind of fresh eggs. We harvest the eggs and we prepare cards like this and then we expose them to the parasitoids. So exposure is really just simple. And here we can see um, four lamium egg masses. They've been harvested. They've been harvested and stuck on cards and then now the parasitization is taking place. What we are seeing here is uh, the parasitoid, it's laying its egg inside the egg of the folamium egg mass. And then instead of the neonates emerging, what we will get here are more parasitoids. And that way we have curbed the cycle from going on to get into the stage where the maize are affected by being fed on by the parasitoids. So the same thing happens. You get fresh eggs, you put them inside the tin, then you cover them, and then you wait for 24 hours, and then once 24 hours are up, then parasitization has taken place. Uh, an example of a card which has already been parasitized is over here. They turn color from green to black, and once it is ready to go to the farm, it is completely black like this one over here. So such a card is ready to go to the field. This is what we release to farmers. And this is what we are going to show you in our next episode. Now have our parasitoid which is ready to be taken to a farm to a maize farm watch out for part two as we get to see exactly how it is used to stop the cycle of the fall amiwo this is farm trends keep it here